Hey, what up? It's Brad with Home Love Construction. And in this video, I want to explain to you what you should be looking for when you're going to build a custom home and you're looking for the land. When you're actually looking for a plot of land, what are the specific points you should be looking for to make the construction process smooth and easy? Most people think, hey, I just need a plot of land and I'm just gonna throw a house down on it, which basically is true. However, there are things that counties and cities and stuff like that add in to make it a little more complicated than that. So I want to give you some honestly very simple advice here, which could wind up saving you 10, 20, 40, 50, even $100,000, depending on where you are and what size home you're building. So by the way, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below because it does help me out a lot. Our, our mission here is to make this the repository of information for homeowners about renovation projects and new construction builds. Basically anything having to do with building a home or renovating a home, I want them to look at home of construction first. So the way we do that is by getting more subscribers because it helps us reach more people, do more projects, we learn more, and we come back and share the learnings with you. So we've been doing this for 11 years now, just getting started. So let's crack into it. All right, here's the number one thing that I look for when I'm looking at, okay, we want to build a house. Like when I was looking last year, we were looking for a piece of land to build a house on. What I was looking for is a piece of land where a home has already been constructed in the past. Like a piece of land with either a small home or an outdated home or something like that already on it, or a home was there and somebody demolished it and it's raw land again. Most people might be like, what, the slab though? Like, what is it? It's really, really two things, but kind of three things. Number one, impact fees. Impact fees, impact fees, impact fees. This is a major expense that most people don't account for when they're thinking about building a new home. In some areas, by the way, an impact fee is the fee that the county charges you to take advantage of the fire department, the police officers, the schools. It's the impact on the community, the cost of adding another home to the community. We call it impact fees. Now, whether you agree with that or not, whatever, they charge it to you nonetheless. So I have seen impact fees anywhere from 15 to $50,000 of impact fees. If you have already had a house built on that land, there are no impact fees. Now, the only exception to this is in some counties they're getting a little wise to this and they're saying, okay, well, if you had a 2000 square foot home and you change it to be 5,000 square foot, there's still some added impact there. So we need to charge you a little bit more, but it's nothing in comparison to the initial boom, you're taking raw land and putting a house there. There's a, a major cost to that. Now, the second thing is because the reason why you would want a house to already be there is the sewer lines, the water lines, and the electrical lines are already there, ready to be connected to a home. If this is not the case, you can have five, 10, sometimes $20,000 in cost not including the installation from the contractor, but just the hookup fee from the city for them to come out and tee their drain line, tee their water lines, and actually get it ready to hook up to. That doesn't include any of the contractor's costs, by the way. That's just the city's part. And then you have your contractor cost of hooking up to it. And, and if this sounds like this is, this is crazy, yeah, it is. But I mean, this is that's, this is the way it works. I'm trying to give you the real deal here. And by the way, I'm not trying to discourage you from building a home. I want you to do it knowing these things so that you're not shocked when it comes up. So you can actually be a, a weathered, experienced person and you can just have your attention on the things that are important, like making the project go smooth. So that said, the, uh, the third thing is you're already gonna have a space on the piece of land where there's gonna be trees out of the way and the ground's gonna be relatively flat and level, ready to receive a new home. One thing that people don't account for at all when they're buying a piece of land is whether they can actually, cause you know, obviously often there's clearing that needs to be done before a house can be built on a raw, raw piece of land. Like we're talking just forest, right? One thing that people don't account for though, is there are some trees that cities don't want you to remove. I, I almost said won't let you remove, but there's no tree that they won't let you remove. You just have to, pay fees and plant 20 other trees and pay a, a, a commission to the druids and all this stuff and do a freaking rain dance. It's crazy what they make you do. But if you're buying a piece of land with a house that's already been there, the clearing has already been done, likely before there were any of those regulations. So you've already got a nice open area usually to work with 
that you can place the new house inside of. So, oh, by the way, the other thing that they make you pay for is connecting your driveway to the street. That's one of the, because they have to change the way the street goes and the gutters and all that. There's a cost to the, from the city to come and do that. Having a house already there, there would already be a driveway hookup. So that said, the other things that you want to look for, because that's, that's like one big thing. The other things that you want to look for is if you're looking at lakefront property, which I would highly recommend, like it's a great, great idea to buy something on a lake, obviously, because there's only so much of it. And once it's gone, it's gone. You're not going to get more of it. So that will go up in value over time. <clears throat> the thing to look for on a lake is you want to have an idea of how close to the lake you can build the home. In Florida, at least in the Tampa Bay area, there's something that's called a wetlands boundary. So you have your side boundaries of your property, right? But then you also have a place where it's basically almost like the high water mark on uh, the property. Whatever that high water mark, wherever the highest the lake has been, is gonna be called the wetlands boundary. You cannot build within 50 feet of that wetlands boundary. So you need to be thinking with this. If, if your land slopes very gently and the lake has come 20 feet into your property, you're gonna have to be 70 feet off of that boundary to where you can build. So a lot of people, they're like, I'm gonna put my house right up on the lake and I'm gonna just have to walk 50 feet over to my dock. You're not, not if, the, not if the wetlands boundary is 20 feet off the lake. So you need to be looking at that as well because that is gonna, 50 feet is a long way. It's bigger than you think on a 400 foot lot. So you need to be thinking with that boundary as well. And uh, then obviously you need to also look at what are your side setbacks because in, in most cases, if you're doing a more rural place, you're gonna have 10 foot setbacks in more of like a city suburban type situation, you're gonna have seven, six or seven foot, maybe even seven and a half foot side setbacks. And then the front, uh, basically the, the easiest way to tell what your front setback is, this, this is not an official thing, this is just a Brad thing that I do is, and it, it almost always works by the way, is you just look, you can eyeball where the rest of the houses are in relation to the street, and that is your front setback from the street because obviously nobody's gonna be closer than the front setback from the street. So that's kind of what to look for on a, on a lakefront property. And then other major things are, you know, are there utilities there? Do you have to do a well? Do you have to do septic? These are all things you need to be planning for as far as the cost. You need to be thinking about those major things because we just take it for granted. We're like, oh, there's water and electric in a new house, like, duh. But if you're building on a raw piece of land and there's no water, electric or sewer, how are you gonna get it? Is there actually a sewer line at the street for you to connect to? If not, you're putting a septic tank in and a septic tank is $20,000 for a decent sized home. And so, you know, you get into all these different things that you just need to be planning for and you need to be thinking with from the beginning as far as the, the planning of the build and the lot and where you're gonna actually place the thing. So again, I hope this video did not discourage you at all from building a home. I think it's a great idea to build a custom home. You'll see many of my other videos where the question is remodel or build? And my answer is build. In a lot of cases, that is the correct thing to do, but you need to be going into it with the correct information and not get freaking blindsided by a $50,000 bill from the county, which by the way, the impact fees get paid at the end of the build. So if you don't ask about them, literally to get your certificate of occupancy for the house to move into it, which they do enforce, by the way, they will not let you live in the house without a CO. In order to get that CO, you then have to pay the impact fees, which could be 20, 30, $40,000. So you don't wanna get blindsided by that. Make sure that you're accounting for that in your build costs. Make sure you've got it budgeted somewhere. So I hope this video helps you. I hope that you are like, man, now I'm gonna build my house and I'm gonna know about the impact fees, or I'm gonna buy a house, or I'm gonna buy land with a house already on it, tear it down, not have to pay the impact fees. That's what I'd rather you do. So that said, if it helped you at all, hit the subscribe button below. And if you like the video, leave a comment. If you did not like the video, also leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Seriously, I'd, I'd like to know your actual feedback on this. So that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next bit. Peace.